Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? My name is Lin. I'm a curator and uh, also a multimedia artist myself. So I'm going to be the presenter of this week. <laughs> and for people who have no idea uh, what is a curator, uh, basically this person is just the one who helps the artist to um, put their artwork on a stage and uh, managing the exhibitions. And also when the artists are too shy to share the idea of their artworks, the curators are the people who help with conveying their ideas to the audience, and also doing all the writing jobs for the exhibitions. So um, this week, I'm going to invite you to join with me of a short journey of exploring the possibility of utilizing everything we can find in life to make art. So here you can see um, um, the things on my table are basically the materials I'm going to work with today. We have some uh, papers, uh, the old magazines, and uh, the pamphlet that's ended up is in your mailbox for no reasons. And also we have some food packages. And uh, I have a plastic bottle and also a glass one. Um, I'm probably not going to use both of them, but uh, I just uh, put both of them here to show you that uh, here are things that you can choose from. Um, I personally really do not like plastic and like everything made out of plastic, but uh, they're, they're basically just everywhere. So <laughs> yeah, but uh, if you don't have a plastic bottle, you have a glass one, that's totally fun. Um, they probably are going to be our transparent canvas today. So um, they're the fun things that we're going to play with. Actually, making art out of the garbage, it's a very common thing in contemporary artwork. And uh, one example that I'm going to uh, present here, it's the artwork on this year's Art Basel, uh, which is the biggest uh, art fair uh, happening in Europe every year. A New York-based artist, um, his name is Leonardo Drew, made a large installation, so it attracted a lot of attention, because people are thinking uh, uh, the installation that he made, it really reminds them of the garbage recycling center. And my friends just that came to me and uh, they were saying, like, Ling, do you think that contemporary art has something to do with garbage recycling, and I was like, yes, absolutely right, and why not? So I personally really think that garbage is a very good resource that uh, we can work with in art creating, not only because that, uh, they're very easily accessible, um, they're everywhere, they're a part of our life, and also because they're like a miniature of our lifestyle nowadays. Yeah, so garbage is our life, and uh, why don't we include that in art making? So the most fun part of mixed media art making is like that you are actually like playing a game with the materials that you work with, and meanwhile you're both the game player and also the de designer of the game. So just uh, remember that point, and I hope that actually um, the process I'm taking today are going to inspire you 
to take uh, some steps all of yourself. So just uh, be creative, play, have fun, and uh, think a little bit, maybe. So, all right, let's just uh, get started. Um, as you can see, I have this plastic bottle. Um, as I mentioned previously, this plastic bottle is going to be my canvas today. Um, it's easily accessible. They are everywhere, and um, it really does not look very special. It's transparent. It has some patterns on top of it, but uh, that's okay. I don't imagine that it's to be like basically huh, a very even service with nothing on top of it. That's boring. So let's actually the theme of this month's workshop is steel contrast. So if I want to create some contrast out of this plastic bottle, what we're going to do? Yeah, so we're going to add some colors. So here's why we're having this aluminum foil uh, for packages, particular shapes over here. Oh, yeah, and uh, while I was talking about um, the materials we're going to use today, I forgot to mention that uh, I have the glues and uh, I have scissors here. That's the things that I'm going to work with today. I like if you don't have a glue, that's okay because uh, for our workshop, nothing is for tape. I recommend you to have a scissors because uh, that's actually going to allow you to create more shapes and uh, more shapes, more fun. But uh, if you don't have a scissors, that's okay. You can find out some other ways to work with these tiles as well. Yeah, so let's just get started. So I opened it. I have the plastic bottle. And uh, for the all in foil, um, what I'm going to do is it. It's, um, I, I don't really like um, it being just um, still in the shape of the food package. So I'm going to make it into some small pieces. repeat a lot of uh, making this kind of uh, uh, volume uh, for you uh, strokes and uh, then what I'm thinking is like I'm going to put all of them inside of this plastic bottle so I still have it being transparent but uh, there's some uh, shining part you know the color inside of it here's one way that I'm trying to create a contrast Um, this thing here is like in a very strange shape because I used it as another art project that I was working in another day. So um, if you're wondering why it's in such a super random shape, uh, that's the reason. When you're cutting um, those potato chips packages, I'm going to cut them into strokes. But um, there is actually no roofs. Again, there's no roofs. You can do whatever you want. I want them to be very slim, very thin strokes uh, in order to reach the little effect that I want. But uh, it is free for you to do whatever you want with it. You can cut it into triangles, you can cut it into a circle. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, that's uh, what I was talking about, like adding some shining pod and also adding some color into it. So I'm really going to repeat this so many times. So here's another thing about creating the contrast. Repeating, uh, repetition, uh, repeating what you're doing. It's really a very good way if you want to create a contrast. Because when you just have uh, like small stuffs of like something that is 
not really um, so easy to attract people's attention, uh, that's fine. Um, it's like, for example, this thrill. This is nothing special. But think about if you have a million of that, and throwing that, like, uh, throwing that in front of everyone, this is really going to attract people's attention. Hmm. Actually, I don't think the scissors I'm working with today is doing a very good job, so I'm going to try to change it to this one. So what I'm trying to do is uh, I'm trying to feel, kind of like feel, this uh, plastic bottle, uh, this uh, olive oil here that I'm having here on hand. And um, again, you don't have to do the same things, but uh, I'm going to do this for a while. You can watch me doing it, or you can do something else with your materials. Just so remember, there's no rules in uh, your game changer, so you make the rules for your own game. Nice and you have to learn is always making mess. It's like a very necessary part of uh, making art. More mess, more fun. <laughs> Here we really have a lot of them, and uh, I'm going to put them into that plastic bottle. Yeah, I really personally uh, don't like those uh, industrialized products because they're all in the same shape, same design, no fun, no surprise. So, let's create some surprise ourselves. And, um, in case if you're following what I'm doing right now, when I'm cutting, um, when I'm creating those strings, I was not trying to just, uh, like I just mentioned, I was trying to uh, create them in the shape of uh, being thin and thin, but uh, I also am trying to make them um, not being uh, in the same size at all, <laughs> as you have already noticed. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to create something out of uh, a chaotic situation. Something that has a really random shape and uh, something which is really not standard, tidy, and clean. That's also one way that uh, we can use to create contrast of putting a lot of random shapes all together in an order. Yeah, so I have yellow here, I have red here, and we have the silver here for sure. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more red and green. So when we're thinking of making contrast, um, there are a lot of elements that we can play this. Texture and materials are two things, and also the colors. Like for example, a very simple example of uh, contrast is uh, black and white. If you put some uh, black letters, the big ones on top of a uh, white paper, or the opposite, it's definitely going to create a strong contrast. And also, if you put uh, very simple like, illustrations, and if you want to put a very simple icon, a very simple illustration on a very complicated background. That's also a very good way of uh, creating contrast. Now we have a lot. Does this remind you of uh, anything? Yeah, those uh, uh, silver strips that I just created. It can really be everything. So yeah, that's the charm of abstract art, and uh, that's a charm of uh, mixed media.
one she hates is like, um, as I keep mentioning, like I hate things in a decided order. <laughs> so yeah, I want to make them a little bit more chaotic and random. Um, so here um, you can see, like we're creating some contrast with um, the different colors inside of the plastic bottle, but it's not a very strong contrast because um, the surface of this plastic bottle is actually frost, so it's not completely transparent. If you want to increase the contrast, or um, like if you want to say uh, your um, volume form uh, for your strips inside of it in a more clear way, you can choose some more transparent materials, like for example, this glass bottle. Okay, so our next step is the fun part of uh, cutting some papers. So why don't we create some uh, interesting shapes out of the magazines that we have? So um, let's see what I like. Oh. It's um, the magazines is good because it carries a lot of um, information that we receive every day without even paying attention. For example, oh. Like those, uh, huh, those dolls here. I think they're kind of cute. And I want them to be one character. Oh, my goodness. So here I'm using my fingers. You can use a scissors if you want. That's not really matter. really lots of fun. And uh, here you are also creating a very interesting texture as well. Huh. This piece might be a little bit too big, so I'm creating it being a little bit even smaller. What I'm going to do is like I'm going to put that inside of my plastic bottle. I invite them uh, to become the character of my story. Huh. So here they are. Uh, I want them to face the outside so people are able to see you. And uh, you can adjust their position with a pencil. Okay, so more color and a small story inside of our plastic bottle. Maybe this one. Kind of those letters, those words that I don't have to know what does it mean. Okay, uh, we did a lot to the inside part of the plastic bottle. So, what about the outside part? And um, we still have a lot of color here. And uh, let's make a good use of them. I will choose a color I like, and um, feel free to choose whatever color you like. So now it's my time to use my scissors again. Imagine that um, in the beginning of this workshop, I was talking about the magic of uh, creating some uh, 3D out of a 2D, and it's actually easier than what people are really thinking. The, I think here I have a very good example of this. Then uh, let's create a flower out of it. I'm just uh, cutting out the shape I like. It's really a very random process. So again, you don't have to follow what I'm doing right now. You can find your own way of uh, exploring the materials that you're working with. Yeah. I kind of like these flowers. Black and white, black and white. And uh, I'm going to use the glue to glue it on top of them. So, as I said in the beginning of this workshop, I hate the plastic bottle as a product that you can buy in market. That's what we call the industrialized product. They're all the same, same shape, same color. 
no surprise. So let's create some surprise ourselves. I use this kind of like flower a lot in my art piece. They're a special icon to me, and uh, you can find some um, special icons that you like in your life. Yeah. You don't really have to copy what I'm doing, but uh, if you want, that's totally fun as well. And uh, what I'm doing is really very simple. <laughs> and uh, huh, that's good. And uh, this part, like uh, the other part, let's don't use it. Let's don't lose it. I think it can be used somehow as well. If you don't have glue, you don't have to glue them on top of your plastic bottle because, as I said, nothing's for Kate. And uh, yeah, you can just uh, put that on top of your plastic bottle and uh, have fun with observing the shapes that you're having in your head. Maybe this is a little bit too tidy, so let's don't glue it just a straightforward. That's creating a big angle here. Okay, this is more fun to me. And um, I don't know if you still remember what I said previously. Uh, repeating is a very good way of uh, creating a contrast. So again, let's repeat the process a little bit. Choose some other colors that you really like. I choose mine, and uh, you choose yours. Okay. Sorry, I kind of like this rainbow color here. So. And um, now, as I said, we're going to repeat the process of uh, creating this flower pattern. But um, the size of the flower does not really have to be the same. Different size, more fun. of uh, why I choose this side other than the other side, but uh, to be honest, I don't really have an answer to it, because art making, it's really, it's supposed to be a free process, so the reason why I don't have an answer to the question of uh, why I choose this color other than others, and why I choose this side to glue on top of it other than the other side, it's uh, sometimes it's really emotional, it's like I do before I think. <laughs> Um, at the end, I think I might add one final flower that uh, I'm thinking of using, choosing a color which the saturation is really very high, so it can really stand out because now on top of it, the color are high, like uh, a kind of rainbow color, a combination of purple and blue, a black and white. The saturation is really not really high, and uh, I want a color with a very high saturation which kind of really stands out. Oh, and by the way, we still have the all the paper of the potato chips as well. Oh, this might be the high contrast that I'm looking forward to have. Who knows? Let's have a try. Flower, 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 flower. Oh. Here we go. Might be a little bit too big. Hmm. And the contrast is a little way too strong. I don't like it. Okay. Then not you. See if you have some bright, you know, amazing. Yeah. This is actually this is the real way of me reading magazine. I don't really pay attention to the contents because. A lot of them are just uh, basically junk information, but sometimes I pay attention to the images. But uh, that might be also why the images are dangerous, because unconsciously, nowadays people are easily attracted by the images, and uh, then 
the written words. So sometimes you accept the information just uh, even without you realizing it. So yeah, if your parents stop you from watching too much TV, one of the reasons might be he or she does not want you to get easily accessible to the boring commercial that we have so many in our TV content. Okay, there. I think this is good. This is good. I actually have two tries. This one here looks pretty fun. And uh, this one here, it's the high contrast array that we have. Yeah, because the thing that we have this week is contracts, maybe I'm going to choose this color here, as you can see. Huh. It's really going to stand out. But I'm not pretty sure if that's going to break the balance that I already have here, but let's have a try. So, I mean, when we're talking about this paper, Again, you don't really have to have a scissors. The scissors allows you more freedom sometimes. But, um, yeah, actually you can have very even straight lines without really cutting it with the scissors. And paper are probably the things that I play most as a little girl. And, uh, <laughs> there's really a lot of fun to even to cut it with the scissors or cut it with my fingers sometimes. Let's see. On both sides, we have some red, and the red is a color I'm looking forward to have. Let's see which side fits better. This one? Or that one? Hmm. Well, of course, most of the color we have on the surface are low saturation, so maybe this time I will go for the high saturation one, although the other side is a lot of fun as well. You may have a different answer than me. That's completely fine. <laughs> you can think of, uh, if you were me, what you are going to do with your own hand. Okay, here we go. And uh, we're done today, and I think I'm mostly run out of our time, so let's just stop here. I hope you are happy with this making process and what I we have made together, or what you made on your end because I have no idea what you're doing when you're watching this episode. And uh, I actually encourage you to do something different from what I'm doing here. So yeah, <laughs> I really hope that I can solve what you're making. Is that really super different from what I have here? That could be a lot of fun as well. So tell me, yeah. And um, I hope that you have enjoyed today's art making with me. And most importantly, this process other than our consequence. I hope you enjoy today, and uh, I look forward to your feedback to this episode. Uh, if possible, share the things that you made. So I hope in the future you can think whenever you have like either an idea of a project or like you saw something that suddenly trigger your inspiration of creating, take the action and uh, have fun. Like the materials that you can use to make art, it's never ever limited to things sold in the shops that you go to Michael's or class to buy. You don't have to pay a lot of money to collect um, the paint or the materials that you want to use for your art project. It can be just uh, free, creative, and fun. Thank you so much for your time today.